Hello, this is Bboss1997, and I thought today that I would give you a little instructional video on beginning to play the bass guitar. Now, before I begin instruction, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the bass guitar and a little history. Um, in the 1940s, Paul Tutmark, who was an instrument an instrument maker of guitars, he asked he is the one that actually invented the bass guitar in the form that it is most commonly seen today. There were electric upright basses that did look like bass guitars, but they were still played in the upright fashion. He was the one who actually invented the form of the bass where it's held horizontally along the body like this. <clears throat> A lot of people think Leo Fender invented the bass guitar, but he did not. Um, Paul Tutmark did. What Leo Fender did is he popularized the bass guitar uh, Tutmark's bass guitar wasn't exactly uh, commercially successful, which is a shame because it's a it's a cool looking guitar, and I'm sure it sounded awesome. But um, Leo Fender Matt was the first person to mass produce the bass guitar. So <clears throat> there's a little bit about it. If you want to learn more, uh, you can go onto Wikipedia or, or get some nice books at the bookstore or library because there's a lot of books on it, like the bass book, which I that's where I actually got the. Um, information that I just told you. But uh, I'm not going to tell you much more about the history right now because I want to start in on the techniques. Okay, So, uh, I strongly believe that the first way that anyone should start playing the bass is by plucking. There's several different styles that you can do. There's pluck, slap, pick style. Uh, you can strum the bass. Um, you're going to hear a lot of those in my later videos. But for this first video, I'm going to uh, start with plucking. Now, um, when I started playing bass in 2009, I started without a teacher. I eventually got a teacher, but uh, basically, I was first at first uh, self-taught, and I would pluck it like this. I would wrap my thumb around the back of the body and pluck it like this. Uh, you can do that if you want, but um, it's not really the most popular way to do it and it won't necessarily give you the best sound unless you want a really thick and muddy tone which is good for some people but the way that you're going to see a lot of people doing it is as follows so let me zoom in on the plucking area here All right. so the first thing you're going to want to do is look at the pickup here this is a jazz style pickup and it comes off pretty far off of the uh, off of the body of the bass, it's about maybe half an inch, which is good for this, because what you're going to do with this pickup is you are going to use it as a thumb rest. Now, when you pluck, you apply force to the string to pull it back and release it. Now, rather than use it, using your entire arm to keep it like to, to keep it in one place, it is most easier to put your thumb on the pickup, or if you have the right kind of bass, there's a there's actually a, a thumb rest for that specific purpose. But what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to put your thumb on the pickup. It's very solid. If it's if the bass is made well, the pickup shouldn't move, and this should be fine for you to do. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your thumb on it, and then position your fingers so that they sort of look like this. And how to pluck is... Let's start with the uh, E string right here, the closest one. Use your index finger, put it about here on the string, pull and release, pull back and release, pull back and release. And for more rapid plucking, add this finger right here, your middle finger. If you look, it'll almost look like I'm walking, like that. <laughs> so you just put your finger, pull back, and release. And if you want to do it a little faster, do what I was doing. It's almost like a rake. You want to do this. You can do it pretty fast if you do that. Same thing for this, uh, this string. This would be the A string. If this is the E string, E, A, D, and G. B, A, D, G. That's uh, from lowest string to highest string. So if we want to do the A string, do the same thing. Except what happens is when, once you 
move off of the string, your finger is going to hit the E string, and that's going to stop it. With the E string, it's, it's either going to go past your thumb, or you can have it hit your thumb to stop it. But that, with the A string, it's going to touch the E string, and the same thing for all the other strings. So that's your first thing to practice. Now, what we're going to move on to now is fingering the notes on the fretboard. Alright. Now, let's have a look at this fingerboard. These little metal ridges right here go all the way down to the body of the bass. They go all the way down, and these little they're basically pieces of squared off wire. They're called frets. They are there to help you to get the proper notes out because it doesn't matter where in this area you're going to pluck or where in this area you're going to push your finger down to get the note. In this case it would be a B. You're always going to get a B. So I can push down here to get a B and I can also push down here to get a B. So it doesn't matter where you press your finger down in here, you're still going to get the same note. Now, the quality of the note is another matter. If you pluck here, you will get a nasty buzzing sound. And that's not because of your bass, but it's because all this extra space in between your finger and this fret leaves room for this string to bounce and rattle against this fret. So you're going to get a weird metallic buzz, and that is not ideal. What you're going to want to do is you are going to want to press your finger down as close to the fret as possible so you get a more pure sound and that goes for every finger you want to do this now this is where it gets a little interesting because the frets on the lower part of the neck are far apart. So you're going to want to try to stretch your fingers to get them a little bit more mobile because unlike on a guitar where the frets are closer together, the bass has a long neck. So you're going to have some you're going to have to do some stretching. But once you get that out of the way, you know, knowing how where to put your fingers so you get a pretty good sound, you can start working on notes. Now, as I mentioned before, the lowest string is E. This is E right here. A D, G, E, that's this one right here, A, D, G. So there's all four strings on the bass. Now, in a future video, I may show you the six string bass, which has uh, two extra strings, but uh, that's not what we're going to do in a beginner's tutorial right now. Okay, so there's your four strings. The bass is uh, interesting in that the scales that you can play are actually relatively easy, easily remembered. Now, this note right here, if you press down right here, this is going to be F. This is E, and this is F. So that's relatively easy to remember. It's just pressing down this first string, and it raises the pitch of the E. And now, we're going to move on to F sharp. F sharp is right here. So if this is F, this is F. If this is F, this is F sharp. It raises it by one half step because you're moving one fret up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move up the chromatic scale. go all the way up because then I would have to be doing this. But you get the basic idea. Basically, if you move up one fret at a time, you're going to get the chromatic scale. Now, this is um, this area right here is where it gets interesting. If you have if you play an A, an open A, that's this this string right here. But you can also play an A, an alternate fingering of A by pressing down the 1 2 
three, four, fifth fret on the bass. So that's right here on the E string. So that's an A, and so is this. It's the same note. And naturally, one fret down from that would be an A flat. So when you're playing a chromatic scale, instead of doing this, where you have to make a jump from here to here, what you can basically do is give yourself a little bit more time to get your hand down here by doing this. And instead of hitting the A here, you can go like this. So you have plenty of time to get down here by playing the open A instead of the closed A. So there you go. That's uh, the basics of fingering the notes on the fingerboard, um, playing the chromatic scale. Now try to... Uh, when you finger the, the chromatic scale, you want to try to... Now, I wasn't exactly doing this because, <coughs> of course, I'm not amazing yet. But you want to try to keep your fingers corresponding to the four frets right here. It is a little bit of a stretch, and that's, like I mentioned before, where the stretching of your hand comes in. You want to try to get your fingers to be a little bit limber. So, <coughs> there's a basic course in the basics of the bass guitar. It's a really wonderful instrument to get into. Every song that you will listen to is going to have bass of some sort in it, be it keyboard or electric bass guitar. There's all kinds of bass guitars, but what you really want to focus on for a be as a beginner is just getting a bass that feels solid, that you like to play, that you like the look of, and isn't just a piece of crap. You don't want a bass that's that the string is going to be ultra wobbly. You want a bass that's going to it's going to be just just sounds good, feels solid, that's not falling apart at the seams. Now, if you, if you're a young player, you might want to look into a short scale bass. Uh, this bass, I believe, is longer scale. It uh, it does. Oh, lost my train of thought there. It has a I would call this a normal scale. I do have a bass that has two octaves. This is an octave right here. E and E. But I have a bass that has two octaves, but what you want to maybe get if you are younger is a short scale bass if your arms are sh or if you're just a person of smaller stature. So you don't have to reach as far to get to the lower notes. It'll it'll feel a little bit more natural. But uh if that if you do that, then if you get a specific gauge of string it's going to feel a little bit loose but uh, that's not a problem right now just focus on getting a bass that you feel comfortable with that doesn't feel awkward in your hands so just uh, keep playing bass and I'll see you in the next video